Here on Cartoon Conspiracy, we talk a lot about Disney. Or at least I do. Oops. But there's good reason to talk about it. Cartoons just wouldn't be what they are today if it weren't for Disney's contributions to the art of animation. They made animation and film magical, you know? And with the success of Walt Disney's films came a very special place where fans could immerse themselves in this magic. Disneyland, and then eventually, Disney World. You would imagine that these ever-popular vacation spots would be as wholesome and happy and safe like their movies are, right? Well, not quite. And that's where our conspiracy comes in today. I'm Arielle with Channel Frederator, and today we're gonna talk about how the haven of animation the land of your childhood, the happiest place on earth. It ain't so happy. Hey, if you like cartoons, there is a high likelihood that you like Disney. And if you love Disney, then you love the Disney parks. Or at least you will when you eventually get there. I hate to put on my villain hat. <laughs> What am I talking about? I love it. But I feel the need to inform you that these places are home to some pretty creepy myths and legends. Truths, even. Yes, some of the legends are true. So, when you get the chance to visit and everyone in your party is having a good old time escaping from the real world, you can be that guy. Go to the Monsters, Inc. Laugh Floor in Tomorrowland. They'll give you a sticker for that. I've got five creepy things to talk about today, and how we're going to do this is that I will give each one its own rating as we go. Just to be fair, because they're going to vary on how credible they are. Let's get rolling, shall we? Legend number one, the bellhop that haunts the Tower of Terror. Starting off with a small one, let's talk about a haunting. Among all the princesses and the fireworks and the songs about wishing upon stars and your dreams coming true, every theme park needs a haunted house. Uh, no, I'm not talking about the haunted mansion. Yet. How about a haunted hotel? The Twilight Zone Tower of Terror in Disney's Hollywood Studios is creepy enough as it is, but legend tells that the ride is actually haunted by a cast member who died on the ride. The story goes that on Tower of Terror there are four platforms, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, and Delta. The cast members working on the ride are known as bellhops. Get it? It's a hotel. One of the bellhops was loading guests onto Delta, or Platform D, and he just dropped dead, right there on the spot. Most of the sources say that he died on the elevator, but from personal experience, I know that the bellhops usually stay nearby the door, but that doesn't matter. What matters is that a man died. People apparently don't know the cause of the death, but most people say that it was a heart attack. Now it's said that bellhop cast members refuse to ride on platform D alone. If you are working one of the platforms at closing time, it is your duty to ride through and make sure everything is working properly. See if the effects are on cue, the lights are working, etc. Usually you just need one person to ride through, and then there are others who are watching the cameras and working the controls. But when it comes to platform D, there is an agreement among cast members to never let anyone go on that elevator by themselves. It always has to be two or more. This is because the Delta elevator is now haunted. Lights will flicker or turn off altogether. As someone who's already scared of this ride, nope. <laughs> so much nope. Props will be moved out of place, the ride will freeze. It's not exactly fun. I even read that two cast members rode the ride when all the lights turned off and the people watching the cameras didn't see anything happen. It all seemed normal. Some bellhops also say that they'll sometimes see a shadowy figure lurking around in the corner of their eye at night, around the boiler room where the guests are loaded on, or the background of the ride. And there has even been camera footage of a maintenance man riding with a ghostly guest. YouTube removed it. Or maybe Disney told YouTube to remove it. So is this one true? Well, it's pretty easy to find a list of people who died in the Disney parks over the decades, both guests and cast members. There is no record of a bellhop dying on the Tower of Terror. I don't think anyone's died on it. I don't know where this rumor started. The only first-hand account I found was on Wattpad.com under a writing simply titled Short Scary Stories by user The Urkenshires. It's probably the biggest collection of information you can find on this legend. But I also discovered this comment the writer left saying that he found and collected collected short stories around the internet for this compilation. This Tower of Terror one? From an unknown source. So I'm leaning towards the conclusion that they themselves did not work in Disney. The mystery where it all started remains unsolved. I think I'm gonna give it one Mickey pretzel out of five. I completely believe that the Tower of Terror is terrifying at night, and I wouldn't want to ride it alone either. But it just sounds like one of those scare the newbie stories that has no meat to it. Speaking of no meat, legend number two. The real skeletons on Disneyland's Pirates of the Caribbean. You've probably heard this one, the rumor has it that the skeletons on the original Pirates of the Caribbean in Disneyland, California are actually real. Actual dead bodies sprawled across a Disneyland ride. Sounds messed up, right? Well, it's actually 
partially true. The story goes that in the 1960s when the park was being built, the fake skeletons that they were going to use for the ride looked way too fake. Their solution? Install real skeletons on the ride instead. They're already made, right? Less work for us! Where did they get them? The common speculation is that they contacted the medical center at UCLA and had them send a few over. That must have been a weird phone call. What's even creepier is that I hear that they were people from death row who donated their bodies to science. Years later, Imagineers got better at making realistic looking skeletons and the gruesome real ones got replaced. Or did they? People say that there are real skeletons on Pirates of the Caribbean to this day. The only one that Disney cast members will confirm is the one above the captain's bed. That one is 100% real and every Disneyland junkie knows this. Some say that it was actually personally donated by one of the Imagineers who worked on the ride. He wanted to be immortalized in his project. But people wonder if there are others around the attraction besides that. In my research, I came across an article by Ears Up Podcast. The writers claim that they actually had an inside source working on the ride who actually held the skulls and bones in their hands and got an up-close look at all the all-too-intricate details. I'm talking the inside cavities of the nose, details that even a Disney artist wouldn't bother adding. They were confident enough to officially confirm that there were three others still on the ride, and they even shared their up-close photos to prove it. After you travel down the second drop in the beginning, you pass by an island on your right with three skeletons. Apparently the one stabbed in his back and lying on his belly next to the crab has a real human skull, and the skull and the ribcage of the skeleton pinned to the wall is also real human remains. The third skeleton is in the jail cell scene. He or she is crushed under a beam. I do want to point out though that this article was written in 2013. I've been looking at a lot of ride through videos on YouTube and interestingly enough, I think the skull in the sand down by the crab was replaced recently. I actually gagged in shock when I discovered this. Videos dated before 2013 have a creepier looking skull that matches the article's photos, but after that, it's a totally different skull. And comparatively, it looks fake. Maybe Disney finally cracked down and got rid of that one? Did somebody get in trouble? Did the article go too far exposing them? Well, I'm still gonna give this one five dole whips out of five, since the skull over the bed is still real. And they may or may not still be there now, but there were human remains all over that ride some time before. And that deserves a perfect scary score. Legend number three, the person who hung themselves on It's a Small World. What a title, right? So this one dates back to 1999. A family was visiting Disneyland in California and they rode the famous It's a Small World attraction. Some people may argue that this is the scariest ride of them all and you know what? Fair. Dolls and singing little children freak you out, that is totally fair. So this family had a mom, a dad, two sisters, and the older sister is the one that posted about this online years later. They said that on their little joy ride, it suddenly stopped. The lights turned on, the animatronics turned off, the announcement was made, and then the cast members emerged to escort the guests off the ride. The mom, who wanted to finish up the rest of the film on her disposable camera, decided to take pics of the ride on their way out of the building. There's little animatronic children all over the room in every direction in this ride, so it's understandable that she would point her camera up towards the ceiling and take a photo there. When the film was developed, it revealed the disturbing sight of a small person in red overalls hanging from the ceiling. So the family concluded that the ride was shut down because a cast member hung themselves. Here's the thing. The original post specifically describes how the cast members that came out to help them off the ride were also wearing red overalls, which is why they suspected it was someone who worked there. Small world cast members don't wear red overalls. Never have. No one in Fantasyland does. Also, this post says that ambulances and a police car were parked outside in the main area when they left the building. Yeah, that's not how Disney works. This is Disneyland, so there isn't a labyrinth of tunnels under the park like they have in Florida, but they would absolutely not park ambulances and police cars inside the park. Smack dab in the middle of Fantasyland in front of all the guests? That's not magical. Especially with how the park is laid out with Small World all the way in the back. If there were emergency vehicles, I am positive that they would be behind the ride. I want to end this myth here. Yes, it's a freaky photo, but it's a small person in a silly outfit on Small World. It's probably just a poorly stored animatronic. There's no record of this Disney death anywhere either. This has zero turkey legs out of five. It's just a rumor that it's very, very false. Legend number four, Disney's original intentions for Club 33 and its connection to the Illuminati. Oh boy, okay. First of all, what is Club 33? Club 33 is an exclusive, and I mean exclusive club in Disneyland. I'm talking a $25,000 to $50,000 initiation fee, a $30,000 annual fee just to keep the membership, and then a 10 to 15 year waiting list just to get in. Yeah, 
It's pretty much just for the VIP, big time celebrity, businessmen, super rich sort of guest. Kind of a safe haven for superstars who need to escape the crowds and have a drink when Disneyland doesn't serve alcohol to regular guests. Walt Disney died six-ish months before the club officially opened, so he never got to have the experience. But people believe he intended to use it for Illuminati meetings, hence why it was so exclusive and secretive. Why do people think that? It's because people think he was a Freemason, which is another super secret organization, and secrecy always leads to Illuminati, right? Oy. So, I don't know much about the Illuminati, the internet's kind of made that a confusing one to figure out because it's basically a meme now, but the most basic way to describe it is that it's a secretive, culty, otherworldly, enlightened group that is out to establish a new world order. What? Whatever that means. The Freemasons are basically a fraternity that have been around for forever. Like since the 14th century forever. It started out as a guild for craftsmen and now it's a very large group of men, just men, who are out to do some good in the world. I guess. They, they work in a similar culty fashion so they're questionable. They're very secretive, so people are suspicious of them. I'm an animation person, not a secret organized like, they're secrets, I, I don't know. And so once again, Illuminati. 33 is a number associated with Freemasons, because even though there are only three traditional degrees of Freemasonry, the ancient and accepted Scottish Rite of Freemasonry has a 33 degree system. People believe that Walt Disney was the highest degree of Freemason, 33, and he started this club for his Freemason bros. Walt Disney was a member of Demolay, which is another fraternal organization sponsored by Masonry, but is not Masonry itself. This was a misconception about Walt and his connection to Freemasonry. Many Demolay members become Freemasons, but not all of them. And this is the misconception about Walt. He never became one. So there it is. Some people also tend to connect the Illuminati to devil worshipping, and radical types of those people might accuse Walt of witchcraft since his brand thrives on fantasy and Disney magic. Therefore, if he wasn't a Freemason, that would be the other reason why he would hold Illuminati meetings, but... Look, if we're being honest, I think that a club for the super rich seems a lot more lucrative and therefore more likely for Walt Disney than having a super secret meeting place for the Freemasons slash Illuminati. Club 33 was intended to be a VIP lounge and was designed for big spender guests. Illuminati members wouldn't want to go there. The Illuminati probably drinks for free. This one is dumb. You guys gotta chill. It's not really a debunked one due to all the secrecy, so one LeFou's brew out of five. One nice, chill LeFou's brew. It's frozen apple juice with marshmallow on top. Screw Club 33, go to Gaston's Tavern. And lastly, legend number five. Cremated ashes are spreaded all over the parks. If you love Disney enough, your final wishes might be to ask your family or friends to sprinkle your ashes all over the Disney parks. Yeah, don't do that. You might have heard of people tossing ashes into the Haunted Mansion, a ghostly ride that openly offers you to make final arrangements to join the 999 happy haunts in the building. Turns out many people want to take them up on that offer. It's not just the Haunted Mansion, even though that's the most popular spot. The other hotspots are Pirates of the Caribbean and It's a Small World, but people have been spotted illegally sprinkling all over the park. The first reported case was in 1990, and it's a trend that's grown in popularity by the year ever since. It's so popular nowadays that the Haunted Mansion gift shop now sells urns to encourage an alternative option to, I don't know, the landfill? Because the truth of the matter is, if you're tossed around Disney, cast members are trained to shut down the ride and vacuum you up so you can go into the trash. Let me repeat that. Cast members are trained to handle picking up the sprinklings of human remains because it's become that common. There's even a code name for the situation. Listen for someone calling out white powder alert. It means that a burial was caught on camera and it's time to get to work. Even if you aren't caught in the act, you know, they still vacuum up the floors. I guess if you just toss them into the water at Pirates, then the ashes would just dissipate, but come on, guys, we get splashed by that water. I don't want your dead grandma on my face. What I'm saying is that this one is extremely true. It is a five Mickey bars out of five. And unfortunately, it's kind of hard to clean up every speck of people powder once it's been tossed around, so here's a friendly reminder letting you know that you are stepping onto the final resting place of Disney lovers when you enter the parks. I think we might be running long now, so that's all we have for today. Now all you animation lovers have five freaky, creepy, spoopy little fun conversation starters that you can bring along on your next or first adventure to Disney, wherever that park may be. Obviously we don't need to discuss the probability of these things being proven or disproven because we already covered all that. What I said earlier though, about how Disney World isn't as cheery of a place as you first realized and all that junk, nah. Say what you want about the parks, but for an animation buff, being surrounded by the art, music, and characters that you grew up loving is enough to earn it its title as the happiest place on earth. 
at least for some of us. In the end, I give it five fireworks out of five. Would recommend. No wait, this conspiracy is about how Disney isn't happy and I just gave it a perfect score because I got mushy. It should be a zero. Jacob, edit that out. If you enjoy these little ghost stories, let us know in the comments below and we might get you a part two. There's plenty more to talk about. Fun fact, I worked at Disney World a few years ago through their college program. Made good friends with Mickey, Minnie, Donald, and Stitch was my bestie. I miss him. Be sure to subscribe down below and click the bell icon to become part of the notification squad. That way, if you do, you will get notified every time that we post. Again, my name is Ariel, also known as R2 Ninja Turtle. I am all over the internet. Go find me. Thanks so much, everyone. And and good luck sleeping tonight after watching this. To help ease your fears, just remember, Frederator loves you.